Having conquered Egypt and spent some time there, in 331 BC, Alexander headed out to conquer the rest of the Achaemenid Empire. On October 1st of that same year, Alexander's forces defeated the army of Darius III in the Battle of Galgamela. Darius flees east, Alexander heads south and enters Babylon, one of the Achaemenid Empire's five capitals. Matthias, who'd commanded the right flank of Darius's army at Galgamela, was made satrap of Babylon by Alexander. Alexander leaves Babylon to head east, nabbing three more of the Achaemenid Empire's five capitals. He took Susa, then passed through the Persian gates, and then took Persepolis and Pasargade. Persepolis is set to flame. Darius, meanwhile, based himself out of the lone remaining capital, Ekbatana, and struggled to raise an army from the remaining portions of his empire to oppose Alexander. With Alexander off in Asia in 331 BC, King Aegis of Sparta thought it practical to raise a rebellion against Macedon. This effort quickly fell flat when Antipater, whom Alexander had left in charge at Macedon, headed south and Aegis III was killed. After wintering in Forest Province and burning Persepolis in spring 330 BC, Alexander and his army are on the march once again seeking Darius III. Darius III was in Ecbatana, relying on the remaining Greek allies and forces from Sogdiana and Bactria. Alexander reached Ecbatana quickly, by which time Darius III had headed further east, leaving behind the last Achaemenid capital for Alexander. While on the run, Darius would soon be put in chains by his own commanders. Alexander entered Ecbatana, and the aging general Parmenio is left in charge at Ecbatana, and the sizable army is left there. Alexander now followed Darius east, and in July he had reached Darius, but Darius was found dead, having been killed by his own men. Alexander ordered him to be buried. Oxyarthes, brother of Darius III, now defected to Alexander. Now it was time to defeat the Bactrian general who'd fled, Bessus. Bessus soon had himself declared king. Alexander gained the submission of the satrapies of Margiana and Aria in 330 BC. In late 330 BC, Aria rebelled, but they'd soon be forced back into Alexander's rule. Alexander also moved south some, where he'd spend the winter, And when Alexander was in Frada in late 330 BC, Alexander had Philotus executed. Philotus had failed to inform Alexander about a plot against the king, and now Alexander ordered for him to be executed and for his father Parmenio back at Ecbatana to be assassinated. Parmenio was killed merely to avoid the possible negative reaction he might have over his son's execution. After all, Parmenio was a great general at the helm of great wealth and a great amount of forces at Ecbatana. In 329 BC, Alexander headed out. He quickly captured Bactra and then headed north hunting for Bessus and his army. For a moment, it seemed like he subjugated the northeast of the Persian realm when Sogdian nobles jailed Bessus and gave him over to Alexander. But when it became clear that Alexander meant to establish a firmer presence in the region than had the Achaemenids, Spitamenes led a rebellion against Macedonian rule. Much hard fighting ensued and it took until 327 BC for Alexander to fully suppress the rebellion. Spitamenes was killed in 328 BC and the rebellion's energy weakened, but some were still fighting, sometimes well defended atop mountaintops, and after capturing the Sogdian rock fortress in 327 BC, Alexander married the daughter of his enemy, Axiartes, Roxanne. Roxanne had been sent to Sogdian rock to take refuge. In 327 BC as well, Alexander attempted to introduce the Persian practice of proskynesis to his royal court, but the historian Callisthenes refused to oblige, and Alexander never again attempted to introduce this practice, a practice the Greeks found objectionable. With another realm under his rule, in 327 Alexander heads over the Hindu Kush with his sights on conquering India. By India, he was thinking of the part of India around the Indus River, which had once been a satrapy under Achaemenid control, and which had provided great amounts of gold to the empire. 
Beyond that, it wasn't believed there would be civilizations to conquer. In crossing the Hindu Kush, Alexander had to fight his way through tribesmen, and after crossing the Hindu Kush and receiving the submission of Omphis, leader of Taxila, in May 326 BC, Alexander and his newfound allies campaign against Porus and fight in battle east of the Hydaspes River. In this battle, Alexander's army outnumbered his foes. After misleading Porus about where his troops were going to cross the Hydaspes, Alexander managed to divide his forces, with both groups crossing effectively and engaging Porus until Porus's defeat. Porus's army fought well and bravely, and Porus himself is supposed to have told Alexander, when asked how he wanted to be treated in defeat, that he, Porus, should be treated like a king. Indeed, he was reinstated as king, ruling an area larger than he had prior, only now subject to Alexander. But a new great opportunity for Alexander arose, as Alexander learned from Porus that many people existed well beyond into India who would need to be conquered. Most prominently, Alexander learned that farther east lay the great Nanda kingdom, and Alexander wanted it. His soldiers, it turned out, weren't as filled with the prospect of promise as Alexander. They continued on some, even defeating the Cathayans, but Alexander held a meeting with his officers near the Hyphasis or Bias River, and after sufficient pushback from the Elamayan noble Conus on behalf of the weary soldiers, Alexander relented. Unfavorable sacrifices cemented this decision, and in the summer of 326 BC, Alexander and his troops turned back. Unfortunately for the soldiers, this wasn't the end of their battling and suffering. Instead, these troops traveled south with Alexander and had to fight their way down the Indus, and those who then crossed the Gedrosian with Alexander would suffer further pain still. Making their way south, Alexander and his troops fought through tribal confederations and kingdoms. At Mali, Alexander manifested incredibly reckless heroism and got badly hurt when an arrow pierced his chest. The army neared the Indus Delta and reached the city of Patala in July 325 BC. Now, more than half the army left under Craterus to the north, heading into Drangiana, from which he'd make his way west. Alexander himself led troops across the Gedrosian Desert, this march was supposed to be mirrored and to an extent supplied by the fleet under Nearchus, but the monsoon season kept Nearchus back and he only left in October, exacerbating the hardship for the men marching through the Gedrosian. Alexander and his men, after much suffering through the desert, reached Pasargade. In the summer of 324 BC, with Alexander stationed at Susa, many high-ranked Macedonians married Persian wives in a grand celebration. Nearby to Susa, to the north at Opus, Alexander faced the so-called Opus Mutiny. This occurred when Alexander attempted to pay off what he owed, and then some, to many Macedonian veterans so as to dismiss them and they could head home, and many of the veterans started voicing complaints. After a baker's dozen of executions, Alexander gave an impassioned speech for why loyalty was warranted and retreated to his tent. When the chastised Macedonians heard that Alexander was summoning Persians, they groveled before Alexander for readmittance, and a celebratory festival was soon held. 324 BC had Alexander leading forces against Median rebels, and Sparta and Athens, meanwhile, voted divine honors for Alexander upon his request. Alexander fell into a fever in 323 BC, and it was quickly clear he would die. Days later, less than two months before his 33rd birthday, Alexander's spirit seized on June 10th or 11th in Babylon. After his death, having allegedly left his kingdom, quote, to the most powerful, unquote, Alexander's empire fell apart. 